Hello everybody, welcome to another hair-raising, exciting, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where I show you how to work on radios, radio electronics, stereos, record players, that kind of stuff. And uh, this is, uh, could be either be a really quick video or a really long video, depending on how involved this project is. This is a 1935 Scott Imperial chassis. I'm not sure of the cabinet. There's, I'm not a Scott guy, um, but... I th I'm trying to remember the name of this cabinet design. I don't remember it. Maybe it's the, is it an Imperial? I, I don't know. You guys will know. You guys are the geniuses. I'm the dummy here. Um, for those of you who don't know about Scott, they were a very high-end premium maker of all things radio. Think of the equivalent of a uh, Duesenberg and back in the mid 30s that was kind of like the muscle car era of radios where the manufacturers were trying to outdo each other with tube counts it has a separate amplifier chassis um and then a tuner chassis the tuner chassis has one two th i'm going to count the tubes here this is going to be one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen tubes. I might have missed one. And uh, you could option these guys out. Um, you could either choose to get a, a speaker, or you could also choose to get a pair of tweeters. This has the tweeters, believe it or not. I know this sounds stupid. Those tweeters are probably, if you took them out and sold them individually, they're probably worth about as much as this whole thing is combined. There's audio files out there that pay insane money for certain speakers, tubes, tweeters, whatever. Now, I'm looking at it, and it looks like maybe it's been worked on. But I, you know, I've, I've, I've had this repeatedly happen in the past where I'm like, well, it looks like it's been worked on, and then it hasn't. Um, people that collect these tend to want the chrome to be perfect. The chrome on the... The tuner chassis is perfect, and uh, usually the chrome on the the transformers is and the tube caps is is particularly prone to going bad and getting pitted. This is not. I can't say as much for the uh, the amp. The amp chassis has got a little corrosion on it. It's not bad. Um, the top was meant to be able to raise up and down, so you could show your jealous friends your your radio this these things cost um as much or more than a car did in 1935 and being in the middle of the depression people that bought these things were probably pretty well healed now this is actually will be the second one i've worked on um during the height of the the pandemic i, I restored this one if some of you have been on my channel long enough you might have remembered this one uh we decided to keep it for the collection and uh, this one is probably in just about the same condition uh, we're going to keep this one and i think the reason we're going to keep it is because the speaker in this one <sighs> these things weigh a ton too i'm not going to try to pull it out the speaker in this one had a gigantic piece missing out of it and so i re rebuilt part of it and this is a display item. No one is going to come in here and be like, oh, look, there's a tear in the speaker. So we're going to auction this one to raise funds. Um, it's time to be prepared to do some heavy lifting because I'm going to have to take these chassis out and check underneath to see what's happening. I really hope they're, it's rebuilt because these are these are just a big time suck. They're they're not my favorite thing to work on. I think if you are a radio person, you should do one of these once in your life. <laughs> if you are a glutton for punishment, um, they're very time consuming. But in the end, they're uh, they're more like art than anything. 
and uh, just kind of an example of how humans can make some really beautiful things when they put their minds to it. All right, so enough chit chat. I'm going to take the amp chassis out, drag it back to the bench, and uh, see what's going on underneath there. Well, I got my answer pretty quick on the amp. It looks like it's actually been redone. Both of the original cans up top are still there, but they've been replaced with uh, these guys, and it's it's okay work. At least they're using some terminal strips here. These came with fuse protection. Now, uh, that appears to be a rapid blow fuse. I guess if it works, it works. I, I would have pre preferred to see a slow blow there. Looks like this cap has been replaced. I'm assuming that was probably that guy because that's out of circuit. They left it in there. This has been taken out of circuit. These bathtub caps, they're most of the time they're just paper inside. Sometimes they're oil. But regardless, I think that's probably... That's incoming power. That's the... Probably the across the line cap. Let's see, what values are these guys? 0 0.01 at 400 volts. Um, I'm going to replace these with true across the line caps. These are no good. You get a surge, those will get zapped. So that minimum I need to do that. I think I am going to replace this with a slow blow, might as well. So I'll take this back to the bench and I'm also going to take tuner chassis out but I can't get it out yet because I think all the knobs are held in with set screws I tell you what too these guys are made out of pot metal and they usually crack got to be real careful it's a little loosey-goosey I'm gonna bet this thing just works fine I am gonna run an audio input through it because they do sound nice and like, you know, there's not much to listen to an AM. And I think it already has one here. We've got this jack here. That could be for an external speaker. I don't know. I'll ask one of the guys when they come in who knows these better than I do. But yeah, let's, let's take both these chassis out and make sure that we're all good. Whew. All right, so I heaved, heaved this thing back to the bench. I remember this from the last one I did. This is hilarious. It says, notice, this receiver has been carefully tested and all adjustments locked. If the bottom of this receiver is removed or if the receiver is adjusted or tampered with in any way, excepting tubes, our guarantee is void. If the receiver is then returned to our laboratory for repairs, all parts used will be charged for and the labor in putting the receiver into condition again will be charged worth the rate of $2.50 an hour. 1935, that was a crap ton of money. You know, you think about it, someone working in the Henry Ford factory made $5 a day. So think about that. They really, 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 really did not want people to tamper with these things. I think it's also kind of a little obnoxious. It's like, this receiver is too perfect to ever fail. Uh, but anyway, I need to remove these four screws and we'll take a peek underneath this is the chassis that's the biggest pain in the ass you can overhaul the amplifier in maybe a couple hours this takes days so hopefully it's been done but who knows and the result it's all original no everything in it is is all original it's not been it's not been worked on Ugh. And um, I need to ask the powers that be what we want to do. If it works as is, should we auction it as is if it works? Or should we overhaul it? I mean, I'm looking at these caps. And they appear to be... I wonder if they're oil caps. We've got metal ends. I wonder if they say anything on them, whether they're oil filled or not. Potter condenser, it doesn't say. I 
think I might what I might do is sacrifice one of these and cut it open to see what's going on. If they're sealed oil filled caps, they might be okay. That might be the reason this wasn't necessarily overhauled because those caps might be still just fine. Um, but regardless, if I am going to have to overhaul it, I'm not going to do it here. None of the other volunteers are here yet, and when they get there, they get to talking, and I get distracted, and I don't want to mess up on this guy. The biggest pain in the ass of these guys is these. Every single one of these, they have the caps going inside, and the only way to replace them is that you have to remove this, and usually clip these leads because you can't take it off without clipping those leads. Now, why they designed it that way, I don't know. But it's it's original. This is 100% original. No one's laid their hand on it. When you take this plate off here, there's a giant kind of like turret mechanism with various coils on it that switch positions. It's built like a tank. All right, well... And the other thing I'm a little bit concerned about is it looked like it sat in water. I don't think the water, it might have just been surface water because none of it appears to have gotten up into the chassis. This is all shiny. Anyway, I'm going to I'm gonna grab one of these and replace it and cut one open and see what's, what's going on with it. Well, here is that cap. And uh, let's get it in the sun here. It's paper. It's definitely not a oil or an oil impregnated cap. It's really well constructed compared to most of your caps. You've got metal ends. It's really well sealed. The material appears to be in excellent shape. So what we might do is when someone comes in that knows what they're doing, we have a cap checker here, a Sprague hello Mike and we might do some uh, testing to see what the condition is of these overall if we find that they're you know pretty much dead on it might be fine I don't know I'm talking out loud to myself right, well Jimmy's have... with me over here and we oh. ran it through the tele mic and These seem to be okay. They're, it's testing good, so my next thing is I'm going to actually bring it up on a Variac and see what, what happens. If it, it still works okay, then we'll, we're going to make a call. Because, again, this is horrifically time-consuming. And if the caps are actually okay, there's no sense in spending hours and hours and hours rebuilding this thing. All right, taking a little bit of a pit stop here. Uh, we have an up and running uh, teletex teletype machine. Anyway, it's a uh, believe it or not, today's headlines that are running through the machine. It's a ridiculously loud machine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fire this up through the Variac. Also ran a line in because why not? All right. Unfortunately, they're playing the radio on in the museum, so sorry for the, the noise. I'm not gonna bring it up. Make sure that we got. Should be a pilot light coming on here. I don't see anything. Maybe this has to be on too. All right. Let's try it again. Well, either that or my pilot lights out. I'm up to 50%. Now the last thing is, is this power switch in the wrong position. Let's try it one more time. Seems like nothing I do elicits any kind of response. Well, you know, it'd probably help if I actually plugged the radio in. How embarrassing. All right. All right, we're turned all the way down. Yep, there we go. Film it. 
and bring it up to about 50%. Let it sit there for a minute. Well, it's too low for us to get any filament. All right, let's bring it up a little bit more. All right. He's inside the radio. <laughs> yes, I'm inside the radio. Sorry, man. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the good news is that it works. It's actually interesting, we're playing the same station. My WDVX station over the museum sound system. So now we're going to have dual competing radio. There we go. Screen the breeze is dry, it rustles in the trees nearby. Hollow is an empty shell. Farmer leaves. All right, so last week I forgot to film this after it was put back together again. Now we had to do little tweaks here and there, uh, but it's working pretty well. Uh, just because this is such an excellent sounding unit, I did include an audio input. Right now it's running off of. Bluetooth. Anyway, I know that the fact that I'm filming this on a, a, a phone and that you guys are listening to who knows what and ranging from laptop speakers to a big stereo system. You probably want to appreciate how great this thing really does sound. It is fabulous, especially for something from the 30s. It will blow away a lot of modern pieces of equipment, in my opinion. I'm trying to unplug this Bluetooth, and then we can listen to the Ratio. And here's an indicator as to why Manuel's engaging. How long have you worked here? Please. This doesn't even have an antenna on it. Anyway, it sounds amazing. Um, this uh, is actually going to be auctioned for a benefit for this museum. And um, hopefully the, the winning bidder will be very pleased with it. Uh, like I said, the chrome is amazing. Usually the chrome, especially on these these grid cap canisters, they don't really um, hold up very well. Usually the chrome plating comes delaminated. We got a tiny bit here, but you know whatever. Um, I had it playing most of the day last Saturday, and I've had it on for about an hour today. So it's it's clearly um, going to be a good, reliable set. Anyway. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode. As you can tell, I'm kind of like not with it today. I'm a little anxious due to the new variant they've discovered. And it's like, great, here we go again. <laughs> um, anyway, hopefully we'll all make it through this damned thing. I would have never known that this was going to last for two years so far. But hopefully every all of you guys will stay safe, especially during this holiday season. Um and I'm not trying to get political, but if you haven't gotten vaccinated, go get vaccinated. That's easy. And it doesn't even hurt. I've got teeny little needles these days. All right, guys. Until the next time the radio comes across the workbench, I'll see you next time.